the hedge fund manager is forced to eat his own cooking. So they have usually 50% of their money in their fund. And when they lose money, they've lost any day more than 50 times what the next largest client has in their fund <laughs> in proportion of their net worth. It's the same thing of why... Now, skin in the game is very important because, um, for example, helicopter pilots, there are two dimensions of skin in the game. The first dimension is what I call the crooks of randomness. It's the agency problem. And that's sort of known in economics, but, not, but given that economics doesn't know about fat tails, there's a fat tail twitch to it. But helicopter pilots, for example, in Brazil, um, uh, requested that uh, helicopter maintenance people take random rides on helicopters. And sure enough, okay, the thing approved. Okay. The, but the dimension of skin in the game that I'm investigating now is completely different, is evolutionary in, in the following sense. A lot of people engage in this. They're the fools of randomness. You have the crooks of randomness. You have the fools of randomness. The fool, a lot of people believe their own bullshit. <laughs> you see the idea? Like if you look at economists, they believe their own stuff. It's not like they're gaming the system. And when a measure is wrong, you know, their, their objective function isn't, you know, that they're not penalized by their own mistakes. So, but in nature, you don't have that. So fat tails is when a small number of observation cause the major uh, effect on the property, okay? Something you learn in school uh, this is my second lecture in this room. I usually, uh, you know, I, I, contrary to what you think, I don't lecture a lot. So, uh, but when I was uh, here, I criticized something they teach in school called the law of large numbers, which I told them automatically whenever you hear it used or you hear something called linear regression, equate it with bullshit, right? <laughs> and let me explain why. <laughs> because if you're sampling, you need a vast, it doesn't work in a real world. Small number of observation deviations, people would call them outliers, determine all the properties. If you're sampling wealth in America or in the world, right, you, you sample the first 100 million Indians, right, not going to give you the average, right, unless you hit on a few top people. And if you, you know that Bill Gates, for example, is wealthier than the bottom billion or something, right, so you get the idea of, of fat tail. So that's sort of what, what I mean by fat tail. And it has consequences all across. There are domains, like this one, that are not fat-tailed. And that's the rule. The rule is when you have large deviation, okay, the, 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 the average and the maximum are close to each other. Okay? And this one is when you have large deviation, one observation typically will represent the bulk of uh, the maximum is what counts. Actually, you can get most of the properties from the maximum or the second or the third or the first 10 or first whatever. But you can have a billion people. You want to get the total wealth of the planet. You get sample the one, top 1%, you get more than 50%. Okay? Um, don't tell the tax uh, authorities because, in fact, numbers show about between 40 and 70%. All right? so, within the most, so you get the idea. Okay? That's what I mean, fat tail. And there's a super fat tail. If you take violence, <laughs> small number of conflicts represent the bulk of the people who died in, in history, for example, okay? That's super fat tail. You have two classes of things, uh, death by uh, knives and death by nuclear weapons or death by violent, by big arms. Although sometimes on the contagion, death by knives can be like this, okay? No. Second point, why the world has become, is becoming more and more fat tailed. Something called, I don't know if you've heard of it, called globalization. Okay, so you can imagine Google in the 18th century starting in a garage dorm and running the world, okay? It's, it's not. So small advantages, winner-take-all effects come from that. And the dangers with that is that in the ecology, for example, the, number, the diversity in nature is proportional to the, the size of the, an island, for example, or a continent. A large continent will have many more species than an island, but will have a lot more uh, but, but have a large continent will have fewer per square meter. So, and you lose that diversity. But, and then, of course, now variables that we discovered in 2007 uh, are becoming more and more fat-tailed. In other words, you have fewer crises, but when they happen, they're deeper. Unpredictability, that's prob probably what's behind unpredictability. That you have uh, nothing happening and then a big problem, 
called the Turkey problem. And the Turkey problem because the Turkey is fed by a butcher for a thousand days and every day confirms to the statistical department of the Turkey that the butcher loves turkeys with increased statistical confidence. Until Thanksgiving minus one, two days, you have a big surprise for the turkey, right? And a huge revision of belief, and then you can see the statistical machinery didn't work. That's pretty much what's happening on the fat tails. We need different machinery, or at least you can tell yourself that the mean is not visible using conventional methods. You, by sampling the mean, you don't get the mean. There's a book by a guy called Steven Pinker of a drop of violence, and when we looked at data, we realized two things. One, one that he was wrong. He didn't know how to compute uh, the data, and the second thing, if anything, is the rise of violence, but more concentrated. So if you take history, it's uh, fewer and deeper. That's pretty much fat tail, and the conventional test statistics don't work for that. Okay, now, this is number one, and this pretty much explains why uh, if, you're, if you throw garbage after garbage of data, it's not going to work. But, but, but you can see extremes from data. So if you can use data, big data for extremes, only take extremes. Or for targeted thing, you ask a question, is he, does he know anyone who has a beard without a mustache? All right? It's very good for terrorism, <laughs> but it's not good to predict the socioeconomic events. Okay? Except then after the fact, I mean, it's like predicting catalysts. All right? You can't, you know, you're not predicting. Yeah. And then when, when you have a, like a bridge collapsing, people you know, don't analyze in engineering, you don't analyze. Uh, the, the colors of the last truck that was on it that may have caused the collapse. You look at how fragile the bridge is. Okay, so this is so far um, my idea. And here now let's talk about something, skin in the game and moral hazard. You've heard of a place called Wall Street. Right? This is very generalized, actually, even outside Wall Street. Uh, if you make, a, uh, you know banks, they like to make money steadily, all right? On their fat tails, you don't see, because I said large, large, large numbers operate very slowly on the fat tails. Very, very, very slowly. Okay, you need vastly more data to figure out if someone is really making money. Yet, corporation, everybody, they get a bonus, something called a B. If you make money for a year, you get a bonus at your end, no? So, you make money year one, you get a bonus. Year two, you get another bonus. Year three, if you live in New York, then suddenly all your jokes become funny. All right, you make money three years in a row. You get more and more money under management. The bank gets bigger, they expand. Then, okay, and then they continue, a lot of bees. And then comes a point when y you have a turkey problem, right? <laughs> when, hey, you know what? The Thanksgiving one is two, the equivalent for the bank. 1982, banks lost more money than the history of banking. And we didn't even have bonuses then at the time, right? More in the history of money center banking on, on one event. 2007, 2008, 4.7 trillion before, of course, the taxpayer came to rescue them, uh, okay, in an implicit way. And, of course, here, what people do is they write a letter saying the odds of this event are so low that we can see it, and surely there's a sentence, surely is as much of a surprise to us as it was to you, that was in the 1998 uh, when uh, long-term capital management blew up, and you saw it again in 2007, 2008, with absolutely no linguistic evolution. Same, same sentence, all right? Now this, I've generalized, I'm generalizing this to the following. Any situation in which you have the upside Without the downside, you're invited to fool people with statistical property you have hidden risks that blow up rarely. And then using the Markowitz, Markowitz, all that bullshit, people will give you here, will tell you that it's very safe, when in fact it's hidden risk and you cannot make these claims based on uh, the structure of the portfolio. So with time, those who survive, well, the corporation, the minute corporations go to the market, they start developing this payoff. Visible profits and steady and hidden losses not borne by them. I call that the Bob Rubin trade, $120 million collected from uh, Citibank. And when Citibank happened, he said, well, it was so unexpected. He didn't return the $119 million he should return, all right? He kept, you know, I'd keep one for, for the drivers and stuff like that, but no, $120 million. 
Okay? So I, I call that, I said, you know, John Gotti, for example, the mafia, they never made that money. Okay? Same thing happened recently after the crisis. I don't know if you heard J.P. Morgan, the whale. Well, same thing. All these people are getting $30 million of bonuses on something that really uh, was hiding risk, and of course they lost it all. And then they spun a story, and people kept their previous bonuses. No, no clawback, all right? or minor clawback, if it ever happened once in Swiss Bank. All right. so, but this we can generalize to any profession. Ones that are more popular. Sorry? Someone said something? Oh, no, you, you have your microphone on. But feel free to interrupt if you're angry or something, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, no, but, okay, so here we have a class of uh, 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 thing, and I call it no skin in the game. If you have skin in the game at all times, you don't have that problem, okay? This sort of explain, this kind of setup explains the modernity. Modernity was people getting benefits from their action and with the adverse effect not being affecting them because they're not visible, they're delayed, and they hit them later, okay? And you can generalize to a lot of situations in which, say you're a bureaucrat, you're gonna do something that improves your, your uh, year-end uh, uh, job assessment, but then you hide risk, and then of course when things blows up, you say, oh, it's unexpected, okay? And uh, so you have an invitation to have steady thing rather than volatility. And effectively, based on this principle, you're gonna see when you look at countries at anything, anything that's very volatile, when things are very volatile, guess what? They're more stable. <laughs> when things are steady, they're very stable. There's something, people in finance are definitely, I mean, it's like a generalized fraud because if you look at a metric called Sharpe Ratio, which is average return divided by standard deviation of return. The first thing is standard deviation of return doesn't work under fat tails or right, measuring uh, risk. Uh, the ones with highest, the funds of, from Lehman Brothers, not Lehman, uh, the, the firm that went bust, uh, Bear Stearns, not Lehman Brothers, Bear Stearns, the funds, the, the highest funds, the ones that went bust, were from uh, Bear Stearns. They had never lost money until they lost money. Pure turkey problem, okay? All right, so, so now I've set up, I've explained unpredictability, I've explained fat tails, I explain how people tend to position themselves on delayed uh, uh, blow-ups. If you have a job assessment, no morals and no skin in the game. Hedge fund, incidentally, don't have that problem. You know why? Why? They're forced, exactly, he said it. He said forced to, a hedge fund manager is forced to eat his own cooking. So they have usually 50% of their money in their fund. And when they lose money, they've lost any day more than 50 times what the next largest client has in their fund <laughs> in proportion of their net worth. It's the same thing of why, now skin in the game is very important because, um, for example, helicopter pilots, there, there are two dimensions of skin in the game. The first dimension is what I call the crooks of randomness, is the agency problem, and that's sort of known in economics, but, not, but given that economics doesn't know about fat tails, there's a fat tail twitch to it. But helicopter pilots, for example, in Brazil, um, uh, requested that uh, helicopter maintenance people take random rides on helicopters. <laughs> and sure enough, okay, the thing improved. Okay. The, but the dimension of skin in the game that I'm investigating now is completely different, is evolutionary, in, in the following sense. A lot of people engage in this, they're the fools of randomness. You have the crooks of randomness, you have the fools of randomness. The fool, a lot of people believe their own bullshit. <laughs> you see the idea? Like, if you look at economists, they believe their own stuff. It's not like they're gaming the system. And when a measure is wrong, you know, their, their objective function isn't, you know, that they're not penalized by their own mistakes. So, but in nature, you don't have that. In nature, anyone who endangers others, all right, okay, you don't have evolution unless those who endanger others are themselves at, at the same, bear the same risk. So let's say, if you, have you been on highway? There are highways here to get here? Okay, go on a highway. Uh, any per, you remember that pilot, that crazy guy, that pilot? Okay, anybody could do it on a highway. You don't need to be, be on a plane. You can kill 30 people. You can go wild and kill 30 people on a highway, no? You go against traffic and kill 30 people. Why aren't there that many of these? Can someone tell me? Sorry? Be, no, it's not because they have skin in the game. They could be crazy and not have skin in the game. I'm not at the crooks of randomness, agency problem. I'm at the fools of randomness. Why? Because they're dead. 
like this, the guy who killed a hundred and some people, he's dead. So you can't have that higher ratio in the population of these people because they end up killing themselves. You know, if they, when they kill others, they kill themselves as well. You see, they filtered out of the system. You see, so so it's like entrepreneurs who make mistakes; they're dead. <laughs> you see, they're dead. So this is pretty much uh, what people don't realize as a filtering tool: is that you, you're uh, because in an opacity, in a very opaque environment. Sorry. Yeah, but the, okay, the, the, there are exceptions, but it helps that they're dying as well, and in the operation. You see, it does help. But I mean, of course, you have exceptions with ISIS, but typically, traditionally the ratio of people who are bellicose in the population has stayed lower you know, than, than, than the level you need to blow up the planet because the nuts like Alexander, Napoleon, and these people would go to battle, would stay at the front line in battle. Hannibal, the nut, a complete nut, if you look at it, there's people say make him a hero, he's a complete irrational fellow. All right? Hannibal was in front line. Okay, he was first in battle, and that was... They all these, so that was, that's traditionally what, what has happened. Two, I mean, suicide bombers kill themselves. So they filter out, they kill other people. But I don't think that we can talk about suicide bombers as a real danger to the system as a whole, given that the number of uh, casualties coming from them is still very, very minute. Every day in America, 7,000 people die. And say so multiply by 20 to get the number of people who die on the planet and count how many of these come from suicide bombers. And, and you realize that we're still talking about low risk, much bigger risk. Okay, I'm not. This is okay. We're talking about skin in the game and as a filtering tool for people who endanger others. Okay, so the, the, I, I know, we're not judging whether it's, terrorism is dangerous or not. I believe it is dangerous, but that's another. I believe it's very, very dangerous psychologically and stuff like that. I'm talking about the mechanism of filtering people in a pool. You see, as a mechanism of filtering, betray, I was a pit trader. And the mechanism of filtering, there was a mechanism of filtering, and, 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 and people would go bust for their own money. They wouldn't survive hiding risk. And effectively, traders don't like to hide risk. What happened is they, they, they claw this. 